Well, now that the uh, pandemic is about to become an endemic, let's focus back on dual citizenship. A lot of people were asking me questions, how do I get dual citizenship? Gee, I cannot get an appointment at the U.S. immigration. Gee this, gee that. That's what we'll talk about. Stay with me. Regarding the question of dual citizenship, a lot of people were struggling to get them after the Balik Bayans were not allowed, only citizens, for example, right now, citizens are allowed to be unvaccinated. Balik Bayans are considered foreign citizen and they are required to be vaccinated. So just what is the difference? Let me go from the very beginning. You are in the Philippines. <clears throat> You receive a Philippine passport. You need this to leave the country. That is your identification that you are a Philippine citizen. Not Filipino, because we are all Filipinos, let's say, but you are a Philippine citizen. You're going to the US, let's say, or any other foreign country. You need a visa. Visa is a permit for you to enter the country. And it will put you in different categories, like you could be a permanent resident, you could be a student, you could be whatever you could be, okay? So that is your permit to enter that foreign country. That's the difference between a visa and a passport. Now, let's say you came to the US. You present to the US your Philippine passport because they need to know what citizenship do you have? Where did you come from? Philippines. Now you need to show your permit also. And let's say, ah, so you are an immigrant. You have the permit to be, to emigrate to the United States, let's just say. Then they give you a green card. Whether they give you a green card at the point of entry or sometime later, or maybe even before you depart the Philippines, I don't know what the procedure is now. So now you are a permanent resident. You're holding two documents, passport, you are a Filipino citizen, or Philippine citizen and visa. Now, if you keep on renewing your visa and renewing your passport, you maintain the same identity. But for many people, what they did after staying for so long in the United States, they apply for United States citizenship. Let's say you get that citizenship. What they do is they confiscate your green card and they give you the certificate of naturalization to become a U.S. citizen. You then apply for a U.S. passport. Again, that U.S. passport identifies you as a U.S. citizen. What happens to your Philippine passport? Null and void. You're no longer a Philippine citizen. Now, in some countries, they may not require you to get rid of your old Philippine citizenship. But Philippines assumes that when you acquire a citizenship in a foreign country that you have forgone your Philippine citizenship. Is that clear? Even though this, the country does not say you are no longer a Philippine citizen, Philippine citizen says you are not. That is the assumption. Now, so now you become a U.S. citizen. Your Philippine passport is null and void. Do not renew it because you're not entitled to renew it. You're no longer a Philippine citizen. Now you want to go back to the Philippines. When you go back to the Philippines, you cannot say you're entering the Philippines as a Philippine citizen. You're entering the Philippines as a Balikbayan. Now, Balikbayan is a law that allows people in selected foreign country. So your country does not necessarily entitle you to a Balikbayan program. But Balikbayan is for former Filipino citizen. All right? Now, I would suggest, with some exceptions, that you get a dual citizenship. So let's talk about what dual citizenship is all about. 
dual citizenship now you are a u.s citizen now okay you are now a u.s citizen philippines allow you to recapture to get back your philippine citizenship once you get that you are now a dual citizen you are now going to hold a valid philippine passport and a u.s passport now philippines as far as i'm concerned it's silly allows you not to get the philippine passport they allow you to just have your dual citizenship certificate to enter the country but a lot of airlines don't know that because they always expect to see a passport that's why i always recommend get rid of that headache and buy yourself a philippine passport it only costs what fifty dollars or up to one hundred dollars no more than one hundred dollars and you will have two passports philippine passport u.s passport and you will have no problem going in and out there are some benefits major benefits to being a dual citizen but that's going to be another topic you don't want to be a dual citizen if you are young that means philippines can draft you in case of war but when you're old they're not gonna draft you they're not gonna send a 65 year old person to go to war also if you're working for the military they are not allowed dual citizenship because you will not be able to receive security clearance but if you are not working in the military there's no other drawback uh, the other thing about not being a dual citizen is your ability to vote but that may not be important to you maybe you don't care about politics and you don't care to vote so there is no disadvantage so i hope that is clear first you philippine uh, philippine passport you're a philippine citizen you came to the u.s as long as you do not apply for u.s citizenship you still have a green card which is the authority for you to work and stay in the united states permanent resident but you are still a filipino citizen or philippine citizen okay you can go back to the philippines as what they call a balik bayan but there are different rules for balik bayan and dual citizen and during this pandemic a lot of people say gee i want to get my dual citizenship because i cannot get into the philippines and that is the problem last minute you cannot get an appointment with the philippine consulate don't wait don't wait until you need it people ask me questions about gee how come there is a difference in name at that moment that there is a difference in name spelling or whatever you should change it you should always keep your documents straight don't wait until you're about to leave and then you're scrambling and gee you know how, how do i do this okay uh, and if you ask me questions about that i have no idea i don't know how long it's gonna take i don't know what the procedure is do it at the moment there is a change marital status change in name misspelling and things like that keep your papers clean straight correct all the time so let me show you the video that I made back in 2019 regarding how to get a dual citizenship. And that's where we will go next. Uh, for those people who have already seen this, this is back in 2019, you can skip and end it right here. But for people who are interested in getting dual citizenship and don't know how to proceed, here's the video. Republic Act 9225 only applies to natural born Filipinos who lost their Philippine citizenship through naturalization in another country. Now, foreigners who wish to acquire Filipino citizenship through naturalization could apply under a different law, but not under 9225. This is not, and by the way, this is not part of the presentation, okay? This is only going to talk about 9225, and that applies to natural born Filipinos. Now, uh, 9225 does not apply to those born in the U.S., okay? If you were born before January 17, 1973 to a Filipino father at the time of birth, or if you were born after January 17, 1973 to a Filipino father or mother at the time of the birth, it looks like as of January 17, 1973, they changed the law. It used to be that 
uh, uh, this law does not apply if you only had Filipino father, but now after January 1973, it could be either a Filipino father or a mother, okay? Now, the reason it does not apply is under either of these two scenarios, you are already a dual citizen by birth, and all you have to do is comply with the report of birth requirement, okay? Uh, when you are born, you have an American or foreign uh, birth certificate. Philippines did not know that you existed. So the first thing to do is to file what they call a report of birth requirement so that the Philippines will know that you were born and that you qualify. That means you're already a dual citizen. Okay, to make this thing clear, if you are born, dual citizenship is granted to Filipinos who are former Philippine citizens. Now, some people were born January, before January 17, 1973, already in the United States. You were born in the U.S. You do not apply for dual citizenship. It will have the same effect in that you will become a dual citizen, but you don't have to apply for dual citizenship. When you were born, your parents may have not filed a report of birth at the Philippine consulate, like my children, for example. <laughs> so, you can file a delayed report of birth provided your father father was a Filipino citizen at the time of your birth. If he's already an American citizen, you don't qualify. Now, the mother's citizenship does not matter. Again, if you are born before January 17, 1973. Now, if you are born after January 17, 1973, the law has changed. It could be either father or mother. So if either your father or mother is a Philippine citizen, at the time of your birth, you will qualify to, to be considered a Philippine citizen, okay? That's different, completely different from dual citizenship under Republic Act 9225. Let's continue on. When you're applying for dual citizenship, what documents are required? Well, a completed application form, of course. Uh, petition for reacquisition of Philippine citizenship, you will have to execute that. An oath of allegiance, three two by two colored passport or fo sorry, <laughs> two, three two by two colored photo with white background. Your birth certificate. By the way, NSO, uh, so-called National Statistics Office. Uh, now requires that you obtain their NSO certificate, no more birth certificate, if you were born in the Philippines. Uh, and the reason for that is it looks like uh, back whenever, I can't, uh, I don't know exactly when, they formed this uh, NSO, so, so they put all the birth certificate in their system. And uh, from that point on, they no longer require your birth certificate. You just need to request for an NSO certification. And that basically certifies that you were born in the Philippines as of a, as of a given date. Uh, a copy of your uh, foreign birth certificate if you are born outside the U.S. Photocopy of your foreign passport. Because at that point, you do, at this point, you do not have a Philippine passport yet. Only foreign passport. A certificate of naturalization or other documents showing that you are uh, naturalized, uh, let's say, U.S. citizen. Two pieces of self-addressed, self-stamp envelope, and of course, very important, a fee of $50. It's very important that you have all these documents with you. Make sure you bring them with you. Now, if you don't have it, don't ask me, gee, I don't have my birth certificate. How will I get it? Go to NSO. Request for a copy, if I don't have my, uh, my U.S. naturalization papers anymore when you became a citizen. Why you lose it, I don't know. Maybe there was a fire or accident or something. But contact the U.S. immigration and find out if you can get a copy. But they will need that, okay? The old Philippine passport, normally when you become a citizen, you just throw your passport away. So they, they understand that. You only bring that with you if you have it available. It's optional. In case you still have it, bring it with you. That is required. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Bring the rest. And make sure you make you go to the website of Philippine Consulate that you are supposed to go to. 
and see how many copies of each document you need and prepare all copies that you need. When we went, we had all the documents, we had photocopies made, sometimes in, even in excess of what they need. So we just filled out the paper, signed everything, got interviewed in maybe less than an hour. We walked away. Of course, we had to wait because of the line involved. But in less than an hour of processing time, we walked away and we were told, come back at 4 o'clock. We came back at 4 o'clock. We had an oath taking. We walked away with our dual citizenship. That was back then. Now it's a different procedure. I don't know if they're going back to the old procedure after the pandemic. Okay, let's continue. Here's, here's how the process works. Make sure that you have all the required documents that they are in your possession. Go to the Philippine consulate or embassy as early as possible that has jurisdiction over your place of birth in the U.S. Now, here, is, here I have a question over your place of birth. That means if, you, if I was born in Philadelphia, well, the consulate that covers the Philadelphia area is New York. That means I have to go to New York. I'm not sure that still applies, but keep that in mind. Uh, present the petition for dual citizenship and issuance of ID or identification certificate along with all the required documents and a fee of $50. The original birth certificate issued to your parents when you were born is no longer acceptable. I just explained that. They usually require an NSO. If you do not have this, it will cause some delay unless you argue and win that the original birth certificate should be acceptable. Bring all documents, I'm gonna explain that a little bit more later. Bring all documents with you, including expired passports, current passports, extra pictures, birth certificate from the Philippines or US, other proof of birth, naturalization certificates, self address envelope stamps. If in doubt, just bring it with you. Also, photocopy the documents because photocopying of documents at the consulate will cause delay and cost you money. They charge too much. All right. You will be interviewed. And if everything goes well, you'll be asked to come back in the afternoon for an oath taking and you will walk away with the dual citizenship papers. Now, this is based on our experience in New York. Uh, the NSO, for example, theoretically or technically, uh, is no longer acceptable today. You need an NSO. But if all you have is that birth certificate, fight and argue why they should not accept that. In our case, and also in New York City, okay, I don't know how it is in other uh, locations, I argued and they accepted it when I was applying for dual. But when I was applying for a passport, they wouldn't accept it. I had to argue hard and I still got it. I didn't have to do it as hard as I did on the passport when I was applying for dual citizenship they they just very quickly accepted it but the passport i had a tough time i had to ask for the consul i talked to the consul and uh, they said well why can you not ask a relative to uh, uh, to fix it for you i said i don't have any more relatives in the philippines i have been here for 48 years they're all here and other relatives are dead and and somehow I was able to convince them and they were able to issue a passport to me and uh, I did not have to present them with an NSO. All right, so that's the long story there. Now, uh, I said here you will be interviewed and if everything goes well, you'll be asked to come back in the afternoon for oath taking and we'll walk away with dual citizenship. This is uh, something I experienced uh, regarding the uh, birth certificate requirement. Are you going to be able to make it? Try it, okay, try it, but don't expect to win. You may find a more hard-nosed console where you live. Let's continue. That is based on our experience in New York. Now, uh, recently, uh, so February 26, uh, 2019, I checked the uh, website, uh, and this is based on the embassy's website in uh, Washington, D.C., and Look at this. For dual citizenship, they said the, there's a processing schedule. If your application is received Thursday, Friday, Monday, between 9 and 3, 3 p.m., the oath taking will not be scheduled until Tuesday. That means if you arrive there on Monday and fill out the application, the next day you will be able to get the, the, uh, the oath taking and, of course, your dual 
uh, citizenship papers. Uh, if you go there Thursday or Friday, it will not be until the following week. Hmm. So that's strange. So I don't know if, if, if this is because of a change, okay? So you will still have to call. Uh, if the application is received Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, other than Thursday, Friday, Monday, uh, O-taking will be Thursday. Now, for the passport, uh, they, they accept it all the time uh, between 9 and 3 on weekdays, but it will take 6 to 8 weeks from the application before you get your passport. And the reason for that is they do not process the passport here. When you apply, they forward all the paperwork in Manila, and Manila processes it and, and, and sends the passport from Manila to the consulate here. Then the consulate will contact you or just go ahead and mail it to you. Then you come pick it up. And that's why it takes six to eight weeks. Now, be sure to call your consular office for hours of operation and ask them about the procedure. Now that you know the procedure and the documentation, you're now equipped with what questions to ask when you call them, okay? So ask them about the procedure and the timing of how long each step will take. It's possible that they are no longer, uh, no longer processing it the same day. It's possible that they're accepting the application by mail and maybe you could just mail it to them and so forth and so on. Uh, but in our case, we applied in person in New York City and everything was done in one day. So be sure to inquire about the outreach program also. Well, let me explain what an outreach program program is. Uh, my daughter was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and then she moved to Seattle, Washington. Now, in Seattle, Washington, she called the consulate in California. I believe it's based in San Francisco or Los Angeles, California. And that's where she got all the information and all the forms. Meanwhile, I sent her all her paperwork from Philadelphia, including copies of my naturalization just to prove, just so she has paperwork to prove that she was born of a father who was originally Filipino citizen and became now a dual citizen. So I sent them copies of all and I had each and every copy notarized just so there won't be any questions. So it's a, it's a certified true copy of the original. That's the notary. Well, as it turned out, they didn't even need the notarization. They just... Uh, they just uh, accepted the copies. Now, the reason I'm doing that, uh, as I said, is you you may, let's say, have to drive to New York, or in, in my daughter's case, she may have to drive to, uh, to Seattle, Washington, and if there are any missing papers, she will have to do it all over again. And that is the reason why I sent everything to her, whether they I know they need it or not, uh, so that in case they need it, then she has a copy, and in case they need a notarized copy, she has a notarized copy. So, Prepare everything yourself. Now, the outreach program, uh, as I said, my daughter applied uh, in San Francisco. She did not have to drive to San Francisco. All she had to do is to find out when the outreach program is, and they have a representative who went to Seattle, and at that point she met with them. Okay? So the outreach program is a program wherein the consulate will schedule on a certain date, on a given day of the year, they will come and you can apply there without going to the office or the main office. So be sure you inquire about that. Uh, because I think they only have that uh, once a year or maybe twice a year, I don't know. Uh, further inquiries on the subject, well, here is the phone number. I'm giving you now. Well, as of as of this February 26, their web, website said it should be Mr. Silverio Maguera or Joey Macatula. Uh, but at any rate, the, the name is not important. But it's the phone number. Call this phone number. Call the embassy. Ask questions, including where you should apply, depending on your residence. Uh, you may be required to contact them and get the contact information. Then ask for the same. Uh, information again, making sure that you are equipped with everything, that all the information that you need and all the documents that you need. There you have it guys. The first step you should do is to check the website of the consulate where you're supposed to go. Uh, there are different consulates and embassies in the Philippines and depending on where you live, they're servicing your area. Check first what the current requirements are. I believe nothing has changed. 
but the procedure may have changed. For example, uh, during the pandemic, they now require you to set up an appointment. No, no, not to set up an appointment, but to send the paperwork or application over in complete format. They will review it. And if it looks like you're good, they will call you for an interview, they schedule you for an interview, and then you go, you get interviewed, and you become a dual citizen. No more walk-ins. Now, do they have walk-ins again now that the pandemic is starting to get to an end? It's possible. I hope so. I hope so because it's a lot easier and better to do it that way. Although I also like the appointment method because you are assured that you are scheduled. And then once you are scheduled, you present all the paperwork and you walk away. Can you imagine me driving to New York two hours just to file the paperwork and then come back and then go again after two weeks or three weeks to go back for oath taking? It's not practical. Also take advantage of the, the fact that periodically they would send a representative, for example, they may represent a, uh, send a representative to Philadelphia and once they're there, you have an appointment, you go there, present your passport so I don't have to drive to New York. Just like what my daughter did. She did not have to fly to San Francisco. A representative of the Philippine consulate came over to Seattle, Washington, and that's where she filed the application papers. But can you imagine if you go there and meet with the uh, representative and you don't have all the paperwork ready? You'll have to wait for the next one. It could be months. could be months. So don't complain. So you have to get everything ready, including copies. So that is the procedure, and I hope uh, you're going to apply for it now because it's much orderly and much easier and maybe less expensive if you do it before you need the passport. And even though the Philippines is suggesting you don't need a passport, just bring your dual citizenship certificate, I would highly recommend that you get the passport and get it ready for any time you need to go home. Thank you very much for watching. Please do share this with others. I'll appreciate that. And I'll appreciate it if you click like and you do subscribe to my channel unless you have already done so. Thanks again. God bless and make it a great day.